Prepare to be spellbound as we journey into the enigmatic realm of lesser-known cults, uncovering their darkest secrets from mind control to the magnetic pull of charismatic leaders. This exploration's gonna leave you on the edge of your seat, craving more. When it comes to cult history, it's often the notorious names like Jonestown and Heaven's Gate that steal the spotlight, but there's a shadowy, less explored side of this chilling tale that definitely merits your attention. These lesser-known cults may not have headlines, but their stories reveal the depths of human psychology and the incredible power of charismatic leaders. One such group is the Branch Davidians, led by David Koresh. In their eyes, Koresh was the final prophet, and their beliefs led to a tragic 51-day standoff with the government in 1993. The eventual outcome was a devastating fire that resulted in the lost lives of 76 people, including children. This event highlights the captivating influence a magnetic figure can exert over their followers, often leading them down a path they never expected. Then, there's the Order of the Solar Temple, founded by Luke Jurette and Joseph de Mumbro, with their esoteric beliefs about the birth and the end of the world. In the 1990s, the world was shocked by a series of events that involved mysterious deaths, but we won't dwell on the gruesome details here. Instead, let's consider the power of apocalyptic beliefs and the lengths to which people are willing to go to validate their convictions. And we can't forget about Aum Shinrikyo, created by Shoko Asahara in Japan, which blended elements of Buddhism and yoga with their apocalyptic ideas. In 1995, they committed a horrifying act that led to the loss of innocent lives in the Tokyo subway system. Yet, it's the psychology behind such acts that's truly unsettling. How can individuals be persuaded to commit such terrible deeds in the names of their beliefs? It's a profound and disturbing aspect of human nature that we must explore. Cults have always been a mysterious subject, leaving many of us perplexed about why people venture into their enigmatic communities. To decode this puzzle, we've delved into insights from experts in cult psychology, shedding light on the psychological factors that lead individuals to join such groups. First and foremost, vulnerability plays a significant role. When people are feeling adrift, lost or disoriented due to recent life changes, trauma or mental illness, they become more susceptible to the allure of cults. Cults offer a seemingly enticing sense of community and purpose that can be irresistible to those in need. Our innate need for belonging further compounds this susceptibility. Humans naturally seek out group affiliation, and cults exploit this desire by providing members with a deep sense of community and acceptance. This can be a powerful draw, particularly for those who may be feeling isolated or disconnected from society. Low self-esteem is another key factor. Individuals with low self-esteem are more likely to fall prey to the flattery and love-bombing techniques that cults use to recruit new members. They may also be more inclined to believe that they need salvation or enlightenment, often placing their trust in the charismatic cult leader. Interestingly, people with authoritarian personalities are drawn to cults' strong leadership and rigid rules. Their willingness to obey authority figures without question makes them prime targets for cult recruitment. Experts in the field have further examined these psychological factors. Dr. Margaret Singer, a former cult member and expert, has identified three personality types more prone to cult involvement. Dependent individuals who crave guidance, masochistic individuals who may enjoy punishment or control due to past trauma, and obsessive compulsive individuals who find solace in the strict order cults offer. Dr. Robert J. Lifton, a psychiatrist who studied survivors of the Holocaust and other cults, has explored the techniques cults use to manipulate others, such as isolating them from the outside world, using spiritual beliefs for manipulation, demanding purity, enforcing confessions, inhibiting critical thinking, employing loaded language, prioritizing doctrine over individuals, and issuing threats to keep members from leaving. It's important to note that not everyone vulnerable to these psychological factors will join a cult, but nevertheless, comprehending these elements can deepen our understanding of why individuals join cults in the first place and guide efforts to prevent it. Cults aren't some distant nightmare. They're real-life horrors that shatter lives. In heart-wrenching interviews, survivors and those who've lost loved ones to cults often share their experiences. The emotional toll is profound and the scars of shattered relationships and damaged lives run deep, persisting long after escaping a cult's clutches. 
Individuals caught in the web of cults endure psychological manipulation, which includes isolation, sleep deprivation, hypnosis, and threats of punishment. Financial exploitation is rampant, with cults demanding hefty donations or pressuring members to work without pay. Some cults stoop to physical and sexual abuse, further deepening that trauma. The damage extends to relationships, as cults isolate members from their families and friends, often irreparably. Mental health problems like anxiety, depression, PTSD, and psychosis often haunt those who've been ensnared. Families of cult members often suffer emotional distress, financial hardship, and relationship strain. They may face disagreements on how their loved ones escape, or even find themselves ostracized by the cult. Some cults engage in child abuse, magnifying the anguish. Notable survivors like Rick Ross, Kiki Noble, and Mike Rinder have spoken out about their experiences in certain publications and interviews, shedding light on the horrors within cults. And let's not forget those who have lost loved ones, like Jim Jones, Loretta Branch, and Deborah Moore, who shared the pain of cult-related tragedies. Cults are crafty when it comes to manipulating the media. They turned it into a tool for recruitment and control. Social media, TV, and other platforms become their canvases for spreading ideology. Dr. Emma Roberts, a media expert, delves into their clever strategies. According to Dr. Roberts, cults have adapted to the digital age. They create an online presence that lures potential recruits, showcasing an idealized life while concealing the darker truths. They use social media for recruitment, painting a picture of happiness and fulfillment, even if it's just a facade. Cults are far from static entities. They are dynamic and adapt over time, growing ever more sophisticated in their tactics. Technology in particular plays a pivotal role in their evolution. According to cult historian Dr. David Jackson, advancements in communication and transportation have made it easier for cult leaders to reach a global audience. The internet has become a powerful tool for cults, he said. Leaders can now spread their ideologies worldwide, reaching a much larger pool of potential recruits. Dr. Jackson also pointed out the evolving nature of cult ideologies. Cults now blend traditional beliefs with modern concerns, making them more appealing and relevant to broader audiences. Their adaptability is a key factor in their survival. Elizabeth Smart, a well-known American activist, author, and public speaker, gained worldwide recognition as a survivor of a highly publicized kidnapping in 2002. Born on November 3, 1987, in Salt Lake City, Utah, her full name is Elizabeth Ann Smart. At the tender age of 14, Elizabeth was abducted from her home by Brian David Mitchell, a self-proclaimed religious zealot, and his wife, Wanda Barzi. A harrowing kidnapping shook the nation, dominating headlines, and for nine agonizing months, she endured physical, emotional, and psychological abuse. Brian David Mitchell was, in fact, a troubled man with extremist beliefs who formed a cult called the Davidians. He convinced himself he was a messiah and imposed strict rules on his followers. When he kidnapped Elizabeth Smart, he forced her to marry him and abused her. His actions were driven by mental illness, religious extremism, and a desire for power. However, in March 2003, Elizabeth Smart was finally rescued in Sandy, Utah. Her story of survival and resilience captured the hearts of the public, propelling her into an advocacy role for child safety, abduction recovery, and victims' rights. Since her rescue, Smart has become a prominent voice in the advocating for child safety and has co-founded the Elizabeth Smart Foundation. She also penned a memoir, My Story, sharing her experiences and her path to recovery. Her journey is an inspirational testament to resilience and strength as she works tirelessly to raise awareness about child safety and support survivors' abduction and abuse. Diving further into the history of cults is like peeling back the layers of human fascination and fanaticism. Let's take a quick look at some notable cult movements and their lasting impact. Under Jim Jones, this cult began with noble ideals, but descended into a nightmare, culminating in the Jonestown tragedy. It serves as a lesson in analyzing leadership and group dynamics critically. Jim Jones led his followers to create Jonestown in Guyana, resulting in a deep, tragic event. It's a stark reminder of the influence charismatic leaders can wield. Manson's followers carried out a series of shocking acts, showcasing the dangers of blind obedience and the magnetic pull of charismatic figures. This group believed in a UFO-powered ascension. The shocking part, members were discovered in California, all sporting matching Nikes. 
illustrating how group thinking can lead to extreme actions. These events are poignant reminders of the power charismatic leaders have over their followers. Understanding the psychology of belief and devotion is essential in preventing such tragedies. Our exploration wouldn't be complete without insights from a range of experts. We've had the privilege of speaking to psychologists, sociologists, and religious scholars, offering a comprehensive view of the complex factors underpinning cults. According to Steve Hassan, a PhD, a cult expert, cults use authoritarian features and methods such as disorientation, love bombing, social psychological compliance, covert hypnotism, neuro-linguistic programming, and deep fakes. Hassan emphasizes media literacy in order to avoid these organizations. As we conclude our exploration of the dark history of cults, it is crucial to emphasize that there is hope and help available. If you or someone you know feels at risk or has been entangled in a cult, there are support networks, therapists and counselors ready to assist. Here are some resources. Online resources like Cult Education Institute or the CEI, Rick Ross Institute or the RRI, and ex-cult members network, the ECMN, offer information, recovery strategies, and community connections. Books like Cults and Mind Control by Margaret Singer, Undoing the Knot by Steve Hassan, and Take Back Your Life by Yanya Lelich provide insights and guidance on cult-related issues. Support groups such as Cult Recovery Network, CRN, and the International Cultic Studies Association, or the ICSA, offer a sense of belonging and professional guidance. Remember, you're not alone, and help is just a click or a call away. Well, there you have it. So, unearthing the secrets of lesser-known cults has been a wild journey. Have you ever come across stories about cults, or perhaps you have a burning question on the topic? Share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more intriguing explorations. Until next time, please take care of yourself.